34 felony counts of falsifying business records in the first degree. That's what former President Trump is facing in New York, according to this unsealed grand jury indictment. He has pleaded not guilty to all of these counts. But according to District Attorney Alvin Bragg, this isn't just about the $130,000 payment to Stormy Daniels. It is 34 business records, uh, 34 false statements in business records that were concealing criminal conduct. These are felony crimes in New York State, no matter who you are. Yes, the indictment talks about the infamous payment to the adult film star and the alleged falsification of business records that came after. But it also talks about other so-called hush money payments, including one $30,000 payment made to a former Trump Tower doorman who alleged in 2015 that the former president had fathered a child out of wedlock. Now, that story turned out to not be true, but the payment made to keep it quiet ahead of the 2016 election, according to prosecutors, was part of a so-called catch-and-kill scheme between the then-candidate Donald Trump, his former fixer Michael Cohen, and David Pecker, the then-CEO of American Media Incorporated, the former publisher of the National Enquirer. That is a scheme to buy and suppress negative information to help Mr. Trump's chance of winning the election. As part of this scheme, Donald Trump and others made three payments to people who claim to have negative information about Mr. Trump. To make these payments, they set up shell companies and they made yet more false statements, including, for example, in AMI, American Media Incorporated's business records. District Attorney Bragg says former President Trump for months repeatedly falsified the business records of those payments for one specific reason. He could not simply say that the payments were a reimbursement for Mr. Cohen's payments to Stormy Daniels. To do so, to make that true statement, would have been to admit a crime. So instead, Mr. Trump said that he was paying Mr. Cohen for fictitious legal services in 2017 to cover up actual crime committed the prior year. In order to complete the scheme, they plan to mischaracterize the repayments to Mr. Cohen as income to the New York State tax authorities. Under New York law, most nonviolent felonies like this must be charged within five years of the alleged misconduct. But legal experts say there are circumstances in which the statute of limitation clock can be paused, including for the time period in which a defendant moves out of the state. And we know, of course, former President Trump was in Washington, D.C. starting in 2017 and then officially changed his residence to Florida while he was still in the White House. Now, keep in mind, the former president will speak tonight at 8.15 Eastern. I, of course, will be covering that as well. If you want to read this entire 16-page indictment and the 13-page statement of facts from the Manhattan District Attorney, I will email it all out tonight to you in my News Girl News Roundup email. The next hearing in this case is scheduled for December 4th. Of course, that can change, and the trial could be set for the beginning or even the spring of 2024. Four.